Up to here, you have seen how uh, the refrigeration cycle or vapor uh, compression refrigeration cycle is uh, a useful cycle and how it can provide the uh, refrigeration for us for different purposes. And in this cycle, actually, the simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle is a reliable cycle for many applications and uh, it is uh, most widely used type of the cycle which we have in our refrigerator or uh, which is being used in our houses. And it can uh, actually it, is, uh, it has uh, enough efficiency and also it is uh, enough to for this type of devices or equipment. These devices, this cycle actually, or an ordinary vapor compression refrigeration system is simple, inexpensive, reliable, and also it is practically maintenance free. For example, if you know this, you can see the guarantee or warranty period for the refrigerator is too long. Uh, you can see sometimes for compressor it is uh, we have more than 10 years guarantee or for the whole uh, refrigerator uh, we have more than two or three years uh, guarantee so it means this type of the system uh, is generally maintenance free but for the industrial application the cooling which we require for the industrial application like different uh, stores and so on we need to have be more concentrated on the efficiency and not simplicity in other words because we need to uh, reduce the temperature for a large space then we need to have a and a more efficient cycle for these type of the application. Moreover, sometimes we ha have different application for different purposes. One example is related to the uh, refrigerator, which we have, if you notice, we have the refrigerator, uh, uh, the, free, the, the freezer part and also the uh, refrigerator area part in our fridge in our houses so we have two different temperature in one equipment and if you notice we have just one compressor in these devices so for in for some application the simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle it is not enough and it needs to be modified so here uh, in this session, I will start to introduce you some modified uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle. We, I will tell you for different type of the modification. I will introduce you cascade refrigeration systems, multi-stage compression refrigeration systems, multi-purpose refrigeration system with a single compressor, like what I told you about the fridge and liquefaction of gases another modification which we have for uh, the ordinary uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle all of these uh, modifications are introduced based on the requirement and based on the application sometimes is the requirement is very low or low temperature or moderately and very low temperature sometimes we need to use this type of the cycle later on i will introduce you one by one uh, this cycle and uh, you will see how the simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle is modified to reach the low temperature or even very low temperature or just to use one compressor to reach two different temperatures the first modified cycle is cascade refrigeration system. The reason to for invention of this type of the system is the very low temperature required for some industrial application, which in these cases 
just one uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle is not enough and it cannot provide the uh, required temperature or it cannot reduce the, the temperature of the refrigerated area uh, based on the requirement. So in this kind of the, in this case, we can uh, combine two uh, or even more uh, refrigeration or uh, simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle to reach that uh, desired temperature. For example, you can see in this uh, figure a two-stage cascading refri refrigeration cycle or a two-stage cascade refrigeration system with same refrigerant in both stages. Later, I will discuss about this term as well. Same refrigerant in both stages. You can see here we have, if you notice here, we have one uh, simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle. We have compressor, we have evaporator, we have condenser here, and we have also expansion valve. And if you notice here, we have cold refrigerated space. The difference between these and uh, this whole cycle and the uh, simple vapor compression uh, refrigeration cycle is this uh, top or topping uh, cycle, which is another vapor compression refrigeration cycle. In this case, we just add this new, uh, another vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Again, we have uh, another compressor, condenser, expansion valve. But in this case, the heat which is absorbed from the uh, cold refrigerated space for the this uh, the cycle A is the temperature or thermal energy which is rejected from condenser and it is absorbed by the evaporator of the second uh, cycle. And finally, in the condenser of the second cycle, it is rejected or released to the environment or warm environment. In this case, you can see as much as we add more cycle, the temperature will go, uh, will redu reduce more because you can see here, this temperature is rejected to another uh, cycle and then temperature here will be lower or more QL can be absorbed by this cycle. But you need also to notice that here, we have added a heat exchanger and you know the working flow for these two cycle is not mixed and only heat is transferred from this condenser of uh, uh, cycle B to the evaporator of the cycle A and uh, rest you know the cycle each cycle is identical or is just a vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Now to find out or to calculate the COP for this cycle, first we need to have some assumption like uh, for what we had for vapor compression cycle, vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Here also in this whole cycle, we need to ignore the change in the kinetical potential energy and we need to assume that the uh, uh, the steady operation condition exists, then we can write this equation to calculate COP. And also, we need to uh, assume that all of the heat which is rejected from condenser of the cycle B is absorbed by the evaporator of the uh, cycle A. In other words, this heat exchanger is adiabatic and it doesn't have any heat transfer with surrounding and only the heat is uh, transferred inside it from condenser to the evaporator of each one of these. Then for the heat exchanger, we need to assume that it is adiabatic and also uh, then it means all of the heat which is transferred or uh, released by the condenser of the cycle B is absorbed by the evaporator of the cycle A. 
So by this information, we can write this equation and that a h5 minus h8, which is q dot, uh, which is q dot l of this evaporator of the cycle A, this is actually QL of the cycle A. And, you know, this is, this term is M dot B. M dot A means the mass flow rate of the working fluid in the cycle A. And M dot B is the mass flow rate of the working fluid in cycle B. And this term, M dot B, H2 minus H3, state 2 and state 2 and state 3 is the q dot h of the cycle b or q h of the cycle b so q l of cycle a is equal to q h of cycle b so we can write this equation then we will have this ratio for the mass flow rate of these two cycle dot a divided by dot b equal to h2 minus h3 divided by h5 minus h8 we can write this equation based on our assumption for the heat exchanger then to calculate cop or coefficient of performance for this whole uh, cycle or for this cascade uh, two stage cascade refrigeration system we need again to write that general equation. Desired output, which is Q dot L, divided by W dot net in as uh, given input to this cycle or to this system. Q dot L, as you notice here, is this one in a state one to a state four with the assumption which we have, similar to what we had for the ideal cycle. We can write M dot B, the mass flow rate times H1 minus H4, the change in the enthalpy between these two states or in the evaporator. Divided by W dot net in. This is the difference between the these cascade refrigeration system and the uh, simple uh, uh, vapor compression refrigeration cycle. In this case, W dot net in because we have two compressor and if you notice we have compressor for uh, cycle a and we have compressor for cycle b so w net in is w net in okay, now w dot a plus w dot b so you can see here uh W dot net in for all system is equal to W dot required for compressor for cycle A, compressor for cycle B, which is for cycle uh, for cycle A is equal to M dot A H6 minus H5. M dot times H6 minus H5. And for compressor, M dot B times H2 minus H1. Simply, you know. This is just a uh, modification to that vapor compression refrigeration cycle. So to find this equation, it is not that much hard to find this equation. Just uh, bear in mind that we need to have that assumptions. Ignore or neglect the change in the potential and chemical uh, in energy in the cycle or in the system and also Heat exchanger is adiabatic, and all of the heat from condenser is uh, transferred to the evaporator of cycle A, from cycle B to cycle A. And by this configuration, we can also draw TS diagram for this uh, system. And as you can see here, we have, you know, this uh, cycle, one, two, three, four. This cycle one, two, three, four is it just a simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle. We have added, you know, this is uh, cycle B, and we have added to that cycle A another uh, simple cycle or refrigeration cycle, as you can see here, five, six, seven, eight. This is what we have here. 
and this, uh, you know, the what is done actually here is between two different states. Well, uh, these two uh, cycles, cycle A and B, which we have a heat transfer between these two cycles. But you notice here, we the working fluid is not mixed in this type of the system. And it is useful because we can also use different type of refrigeration in the cycle. And in that case, instead of, you know, here we have just one dome like this. In that case, it will be different. If the working fluid is different, then this dome, this black line will be different for each one of this cycle. And also, if we want to reach this amount of performance just with one uh, cycle, one simple vapor uh, compression refrigeration cycle we need to have something like this you can see this dashed line as well we need to have something like this which actually it is not possible to show even here but it will be at least it required to have this area in our cycle and uh, but in this case it is reduced to this so this area is not in our cycle. And as you know, the area inside the cycle in TS diagram means the required the work, the required work for the cycle or for the compressor. So by this cascade uh, modification or cascade type of refrigeration system, we can save this amount of the work and also we can increase in refrigeration capacity this much. As I told you, you know, if we have this cycle until here, it should only can be like this. But because we have combined these two cycles, we can also add this area under this cycle, which is increasing the refrigeration capacity. We can reduce temperature even more and we can uh, with the uh, same, uh, same pressure actually. So you can see how it is effective, how this method is effective to uh, reach the reach a temperature, a low temperature with just combining two simple uh, vapor compression cycle. And in this case, we just need to have smaller compressor size and also we can reduce the required work input in this type of the cycle in other words we based on the number of the cycle or cascade number we can uh, make the uh, refrigerated area cooler and cooler this is just one method and later we will see also an example how we can find COP for a cascade refrigeration system. We just uh, we don't have only two SH cascade refrigeration system. We also sometimes have three or even four stages of cascading. And as I told you, this cascading uh, system will improve the COP of the refrigeration system by this. Decrease the compressor work, increase the refrigeration capacity. The cascade refrigeration system, which I introduced to you, has some limitation. One of them is the rate of heat transfer in the heat exchanger, because as you have already seen, in that type of the refrigeration system, we have cycle A, cycle B, then in the heat exchanger, we don't have the uh, mixture of the working fluid in the cycle A and cycle B. It has some advantages, in which uh, one of them is we can have two different type of the working fluid in which one of those uh, cycles. But if we have just one working fluid in both of or in all of the cycle in cascade system, we can uh, substitute the heat exchanger with uh, with a mixing chamber which we call that a flash chamber and then we can introduce another type of the uh, refrigeration system which is multi-stage compression refrigeration system 
In this type of the refrigeration system, we have a flash chamber, you know, similarly like a vapor compression, the simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Again, we have compressor, we have evaporator. But if you notice here, we have two of them. We have two compressor, we have, but we have just one evaporator and one condenser. And also we have two expansion valves here. For example, this is just for a two-stage compression refrigeration system. If we compare this with that cascade uh, refrigeration system, the two-stage uh, cas uh, cascade refrigeration system, in that case, we had a heat exchanger here, and we had also the evaporator for the bounce of the cycle. But in this case, we substituted the uh, the heat exchanger with a flash chamber. Then working fluid will come to this uh, flash chamber, and then the working fluid in this flash chamber will mix to each other uh, from each one of this cycle. It has the advantage of the higher rate of heat transfer between the working flow in each one of this cycle. Let's see in the TS diagram how is the, the flow of the working flow in this cycle. The process, the cycle starts with state one, as you can see here, uh, in the low pressure compressor. If you notice, we have low pressure and high pressure compressor in this type of the refrigeration system. The cycle starts uh, from the entrance of the low pressure compressor, which is saturated in the saturated vapor state. Then, similarly to the in this state, we have this. If you notice, this is exactly similar to the what we have a simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle from state one to state two, then to state seven, state eight. This is the simple vapor compression cycle. And also we have the other cycle, which include the high pressure compressors. Again, another simple cycle, but one if because we have combined these two cycle and the working flow is uh, in both of the these two cycle and the mass flow rate is not constant in all of the connection pipes then we need to be more careful once we are uh, calculating the cop for this kind of the cycle so from a state one to a state two in the low pressure compressor from state 2 to state 9, we have a mixing chamber actually here. From state 2 to state 9. And from state uh, 9 to state 4, again, we have the compressor. Here, uh, we uh, have a constant pressure process in this chamber, but due to the uh, working fluid which come from flash chamber, it changed later, I will discuss about that. Then from state four, you know, this is the maximum pressure which we have in the cycle. If you notice here, you can see the reason why we have this multi-stage uh, multi compression, because, you know, we have here this much of compression, then again here with another compressor, with a high pressure compressor, the pressure can, the maximum pressure can be higher in the system. And as you know, for the vapor compression refrigeration cycle, the efficiency of the cycle is highly dependent on the maximum pressure or compression which we can provide in the cycle. So by this multi-purpose, multi-stage compression, we can reach higher pressure in the cycle. So from state four, from state nine to state four in the uh, high pressure compressor, then the cycle, the working flow, which it's uh, higher, maximum or the highest uh, pressure in the cycle. From state 4 to state 5, we have condenser. The heat is rejected to the uh, warm environment. Then from state 5 to state 6, we have expansion valve for this cycle, the top cycle, similar to the simple vapor cycle from state 5 to state 6 in the expansion valve. After that, it will come to the flash chamber. 
and in the flight chamber it will be divided uh, to to different uh, path the working flight. Some of that the will go to the expansion valve. The amount of the working fluid which go to the second expansion valve and then evaporators is based on the uh, phase and based on the pressure which this uh, uh, working fluid has inside the flash chamber. And the if the pressure of the the, if the pressure of the working fluid is uh, enough to be sent to the evaporator, it will be uh, directed to the evaporator, and some fraction of that will go back to this connection, and it will help to, and it will again go to the high pressure compressor, and you can see here in state six to we. Uh, yeah. Six to seven, we have a flash chamber which go to the uh, bottom cycle actually, and from state six to three, it will go uh, from flash chamber in a constant pressure process to this mixing uh, device. Then it will again go to the state four. We have also another uh, heat exchanger here uh, heat exchanging here between the working fluid which comes from flash chamber which but you need to notice here the pressure of the working fluid in this state state 3 and state 2 and state, state 3 state 9 state 2 state 6 and state uh, well, seven are identical. So in the same uh, pressure, the, the working fluid is in the same pressure in these states. So you can see here this, you know, this process will continue until the QL or reach the desired amount. As I said, we use this kind of the cycle or system to reach low or very low temperature so as we uh, you know this cycle will be repeated as uh, and uh, we can add more stages even to reduce the temperature or of the refrigerated space even more or even to capture more QL the purpose here is to increase QL or even to reduce the W in for the cycle as stated later. You can see here it is more or less similar to the cascade uh, refrigeration system. The only difference is we have a mixture here between the uh, working fluid into different cycles and it forced us to use just one type of working fluid in whole system. The other requirement is Sometimes we need just uh, we need to have different temperature in just one device, like our refrigerator or two door refrigerators actually, which include a freezer part and a refrigerator or refrigerated area. And it means we need to have two different temperatures in just one device. For example, in the refrigerator, which is below zero degrees Celsius, we may need negative 10 degrees Celsius. But inside the refrigerated area, we may need just uh, 4 degrees Celsius or 0 degrees Celsius. So what we can do is to put two different compressors and we, need, we can put uh, all of two different components for different two different cycles in one device. But it will be much more convenient if we can use just one compressor and uh, run the and uh, provide two different temperature by these uh, just one compressor we can do this actually by introduction of multi-purpose refrigeration system with a single compressor in this kind of the refrigeration system we add another expansion valve and as you know the temperature or QL which is the amount of the energy which is or rate of energy or heat 
which is transferred from the refrigerated area to the evaporator is based on the uh, expansion valve. How much expansion valve reduce the pressure? It will determine how much the uh, temperature is captured from the refrigerated area. For example, here, if you notice, we have a uh, multi-purpose, actually two-purpose here, refrigeration system, which is for a simple refrigerator. You can see here, we have freezer part, we have refrigerator part. For the freezer part, we need to have lower temperature, and for refrigerator part, we, have, we need to uh, have higher temperature compared to the freezer part. And uh, you can see here we have just one compressor, we have one condenser which releases the heat to the kitchen air, and but we have two expansion valves. The first expansion valve will expand the working fluid, then it means the temperature will reduce and absorb the temperature from the refrigerated area. But if you notice here, it is just this much uh, expanded and uh, or this much actually temperature is reduced and which is enough temperature for the refrigerator area. For the freezer part, we need to expand more or to reduce the temperature of the working fluid more. Then we can add another expansion valve after the refrigerator. Then the temperature will be even lower, which is uh, required temperature for the freezer. So in this type of the refrigeration system, we have two QL, QLR for the refrigerated area and QLF for the freezer. And the, the whole QL or the absorbed uh, heat or thermal energy from the, uh, the full refrigerator actually is equal to QLR plus QLF. So simply by this configuration, we can have two different temperature just by one compressor. In TS diagram, also you can see this is one from state one to state two, state three to state A. Then state one, we have a simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle. But one, if we use two expansion well, it will be like this from state one, state one, two, three, four. Then five, you know, this much decreasing the temperature in expansion valve number one, and this much of uh, energy, uh, the temperature reduction in the expansion valve number two. And you can see here, in we have one evaporator for the refrigerator and one evaporator actually for the freezer. And you can see how we can reach the lower temperature for freezer. TF and uh, TR, TR is higher than TF. And simply by this, we can reach two purpose just by one compressor. Much convenient compared if we have two compressor and so on. And uh, for your information, the most uh, energy consumption for a refrigerator is in the compressor. And it is highly effective on the amount of the energy which a refrigerator consumes. By this, we can save lots of energy just by using one compressor in the bag. As you have already seen, once we liquefy a gas or we change the phase of a gas, it will uh, absorb lots of energy from the environment, and this is the basic concept for the refrigeration system. Sometimes, so if we want to reach the uh, very low temperatures, below 100 degrees Celsius, we can, we need to re liquefy the, some specific uh, type of the gases. The refrigerant, which I have up to here introduced to you, are the boiling point of them are in the is the normal temperature. But sometimes you are interested to even liquefy some gases which their boiling point is even lower. 
like once we are going to uh, you know the separate oxygen and nitrogen from the air if we liquefy the air we can separate oxygen and nitrogen from the air and this is actually the method which we can provide uh, the air in different type in the cylinders to be used in different uh, application or the this uh, oxygen can be used in uh, this method can be used actually the liquefaction of gases to prepare liquid propellants for rockets or even to a study of material property at very low temperature and even the most recent uh, application is to study of super conductivity as you know if we reduce the temperature of something the conductivity of that will be higher so if we uh, reduce the temperature as much as possible this conductivity will also be uh, high as much as possible and sometimes in special cases to uh, transfer or to transport different type of the gases we need to liquefy them like hydrogen uh, which is a gas but to transfer it we need to liquefy it to, for easier transportation actually and uh, to do this to liquefy different type of gases we have some different methods but one of the most famous type of the liquefaction of gases is the linde hampson system which is a method for liquefaction of different type of gases this process includes a compressor a heat exchanger and which uh, uh, the, is a two uh, component you have already seen and also expansion valve but we have also some differences between these cycle uh, with this cycle with the simple vapor compression cycle in the compressor uh, the gas is compressed in multi stages as you can see here stage one you know we have makeup gas the gas which we are going to liquefy that like hydrogen or like air which we are going to separate the uh, oxygen and nitrogen from that imagine here we have hydrogen makeup as a makeup gas it comes to the this multi-stage compressor uh, which it means the the gas is compressed in different stages like what you, you can see here so from state one to state two we have a pressure drop later i will come back why we have this pressure drop from state two to state three is in this multi-stage compressor the gas is compressed from this state one to state three and this temperature is increased so it goes to an heat exchanger and the temperature from state three to state four in the heat exchanger is reduced due to the heat rejection to the surrounding and this gas then will go to a device actually a heat exchanger which we call that regenerator and its temperature it will decrease even more due to the heat rejection from the working fluid in this part in this line to the the other line which i will tell you where it is from so we have a heat another heat exchanger heat uh, rejection for the working fluid from state four to state five in the regenerator then from state five to state six we have an expansion well you know, which you have already seen for the vapor compression cycle the gas is expanded then its temperature is uh, reduced due to the due to this reduction in the temperature some fraction of some uh, fraction of the gas will be liquefied or will be converted to the liquid so this amount of the gas after this expansion well from state 5 to state 6 it will experience the phase change process and this amount of that will be liquid this amount is gas so the liquid will be removed from this chamber and it is liquefied actually this is the our goal our purpose we reach our purpose here the gas 
which enters here to the compressor is liquefied here. So we remove the liquid part. But as you can see here, we have this gas fraction. This gas fraction will go back to the compressor. But in this, in its way, it will go to the regenerator. This is the heat, the heat which is rejected in previous uh, process. This process in state uh, four to five is actually absorbed by the gas here. So uh, its temperature is increased even more. You can see here from state eight to state nine, the in the constant pressure process, its temperature is increased. And from state nine to state two, due to this makeup gas mixing with the gas which come from here, you know, the gas which come from here, the temperature of that is lower than temperature, which is a temperature of makeup gas, which come from a general cylinder, for example, with the uh, environment temperature or the higher temperature than the gas, which is recirculated from this channel. So the gas come here and mix, and we, again it will go to the multi-stage compressor. So the cycle will repeat it until we liquefied enough gases, or enough gas. So uh, we need to in, uh, introduce this makeup gas because some part of that is liquefied, and we have also some gases. Uh, back uh, which come from the these chamber so we just need to add make, make up gas and all of the gases not uh, does not come from the outside of the cycle some part of that come back from these chamber this is the cycle which we have to liquefy different type of the gases its name is linde hampson in a video you will see why it is important one of the most famous uh, application of this cycle and is to provide LNG liquid natural gas, which is the common type for the uh, of the fuel or which can be used for different purpose. In the video, you will see how much this cycle is important and how it can be useful for different purpose. And also by this we which end of this session, this session, which was about the different innovation which we have had or which is introduced for the modified simple wet work compression refrigeration cycle to provide uh, appropriate cycles for different purposes or requirements.